guys, this is Darren with Creativity Unleashed, and in this video, we are going to be doing metal trusses. This is a pretty fun project. It um, is 28 foot span trusses, and they're at a 412 pitch. They're made out of angle iron and round bar. I utilized inch and a half by eighth inch angle iron on both sides of the webbing and used half inch round bar as the inner webbing here. Here I got the first one laid out on the ground and put it together as the template so that the, all the other ones would come out exactly like that. Did the designing in Fusion 360, an amazing software. Um, with that I did a pretty basic design just to get all the lengths of all the materials and the different angles I would need to cut on the miter bandsaw here. I got the Alice 1800 and it's made in Wisconsin. It is an excellent piece of equipment. Cuts um, everything from small stuff to big stuff. And I think its maximum cut capacity on the 1800 is um, 14 by about 10 inches of cut capacity. But on like a round pipe at 45 degree angle, it cuts about 9 inch pipe, I think it says. So it's um, definitely a good saw. They make them a bit smaller and a lot bigger. So I'm just going to take all these angled cut pieces out and we're going to clamp them onto the truss um, so that it that we make an exact replica of the trusses. Did the um, bar cutting with a abrasive chop saw. It's um, just convenient and cheap. So here you can see the two by four used to um, clamp them together and um, hold them all parallel to each other. Since the trusses are 28 feet wide and the material is only 20 foot, I have one weld joint on the bottom um, where they're butted together. Here I'm just doing a lap joint with an intermittent fillet weld. And I'm utilizing all of the welding was done with E6013 um, Washington Premium Electrodes. These are 1 8 and I um, used a Thermal Arc 160, I think, 1 um, inverter welding machine. Now it's switched to ESOB, the company, but they're a great unit. I got a 50 foot lead on it which makes it really convenient for when you're doing a big project like this. You don't have to move the machine around. You're able to just move around with your finger and that um, saves a lot of time and makes the job easier. I was welding right at around 100 and 510 amps for most of it. And that seemed to be um, the sweet spot for this particular material and um, electrodes and all. So just finding the center point on the bottom and going to weld that into place right here. I'm measuring out from the center bar, um, two feet on center, all of the vertical uprights. And um, those are just getting welded into place. And I moved the tape measure over on the other side to keep them all square at 90. So we're just adding in the webbing pieces here um, and it uh, really triangulates the truss, making um, these triangles and basically <laughs> makes W's across it. Um, and that adds an incredible amount of strength once it all gets welded up. Try not to over weld anything, but weld it where it holds well um, until I get the top angle iron pinched onto it and all pull them together well to help make sure there is not distortion. And one of the great things about a truss design like this as well is that you can scale it to a lot of different sizes very easily. There is a wide range of angle irons available with different um, thicknesses. 
as well as bar, and you potentially could also even use um, some kind of tubing as the webbing as well, and that um, work great. So right here you can see we're putting on the last um, angle iron on the top to finish out the basically a sandwich here, I like to refer to it as. And we just get these clamped real well and make sure we adjust everything in the place. You can see here is the, the joint on the bottom side there, getting that uh, adjusted. The weight of the materials on each one of these trusses is right at 200 pounds. And the cost of the materials was right at 114 US dollars. And so that seems pretty good from, to me the price and the amount of weight they carry is quite incredible. I could have gone with a lot less trusses I think and used a heavier purlin on the design um, which would have cut down the cost just a little bit and made a, a little less work building a few less trusses. So just a heads up, it was the first time doing this design so I always try to make sure that when I'm doing something new that I overbuild a little bit more. But, um, so here's a shot showing how much welding I actually do to finish them out. One of the advantages of this truss design is you're able to get a lot of welds in even between the bars and that um, makes it where you have a lot of surface area where you can weld. I'm welding a bit on the top and bottom on both sides of each bar as well as the ends and um, on the tops on the outside. Where you can, um, yeah, and then the truss gets flipped over here in just a second so that I can weld the other side of them more conveniently. So how the trusses are fixed to the wall is in the header beam where it has the rebar cage tying all the columns and blocks and all together. I um, utilize some quarter inch plate and um, use half inch round bars bent into some hooks and those are embedded into the concrete. I have another video on my channel um, where I did that, where I um, make the roof anchors, the truss anchors. So you can check that out if you're interested. Right here we're about to be painting them and I'm utilizing the a Harbor Freight, one of those $9 spray paint guns. You get them on sale sometimes for 9 bucks. they're like 15 normally. And I put on the upgraded um, bigger paint can canister and we're just painting them with red oxide paint which is incredible, it fins off oxygen really well. I've seen that primer just on metal lasting well over 20 years um, without any rust and we're very near the ocean where we're at doing this project. So yeah, it's pretty great. This one up and then we can worry about the... Careful. 